I want to continue a bit about data mining, but maybe from a way that you haven't thought about data mining before. So data mining, I mean, there's a huge amount of data, we, you know, fair enough, lots of number crunching. That's, that's good. That's difficult, but one thing. But actually, a lot of our work these days is what I would call more the modeling side of things, where you need to do data mining, but you need to do it a bit differently. And uh, here's a really good example of something we worked on, um, and something you're probably familiar with. So this is uh, Calais Dover, the border crossing where the UK Border Agency and the UK Border Force are, are trying to prevent people to illegally cross. In particular, we're talking about people who are hiding on lorries. So the Calais and Dover crossing is actually the main crossing from the UK into Europe, where all the uh, lorry and car traffic goes through. Every year, more than a million lorry goes through there, many million cars. It's almost like a motorway, really, but obviously there's the sea in the middle. It's also one of the main entry points for illegal immigration into the UK, where people are trying to hide on lorries, trying to get across without the right papers, without the right visa and so on. They do this by, usually at night, climbing onto the lorries, hiding between the pallets of goods, between, hiding between water bottles or whatever they can find. And it's the UK Border Force's job to try and find people hiding there. So they actually operate on French soil together with the French police and the French uh, port authorities. Briefly, a map of the port just to give an idea. So, you know, lorries will come in here, sort of snake through there, and they go through passport control, and they go through, go through some French controls. And then they come to ticketing system, they come to the British controls, where again, they need to show passports. And eventually there's more controls by the British. And then you finally park and go onto the ferries. So on the French side, you have a number of technologies that are being used, something called passive millimeter wave, best showing a picture really, that's probably the easiest. It looks something like this. So a lorry will slowly drive through here, and Cosmic Rays will deflect off that screen into this container, the one with the number one on. And what you get from that is something a bit like a low-level X-ray picture. And you can kind of make out shapes in the lorry. And that obviously, if somebody is sitting there or standing there, you can probably see somebody there. But this doesn't always work, because if the lorry has hard sides, the, the, the rays aren't really strong enough. And also, if the people are hiding really well, you can't really see them. So other technologies that are being used is this one called the heartbeat detector. It can't literally detect the heartbeat, but it's really, really sensitive. So you attach it to three points in the lorry, the front, the middle and the back. And you basically just see if the lorry is shaking ever so slightly, which it would do if there's somebody on there moving. Or, and or there's a strong wind. Yes, or the driver <laughs> forgot to switch the radio off, or somebody's slamming the car door, or it, it's not perfect technology. Or you've got this one here, which is um, something called a CO2 probe, which has got of like a ski stick attached. So you poke the stick into the lorry, if you find somebody you know. But if you don't, then you can suck up some air. And from there, you can see what's the proportion of oxygen to carbon uh, dioxide, carbon monoxide, these sort of things. And you can compare it to the outside air. And if the proportions are the same, then probably nobody's breathing on the lorry. But if the proportions are different, then maybe somebody's breathing on the lorry, or maybe the lorry is transporting paper or trees or goods which produce oxygen. And again, it's not perfect. Also, you've got some dogs uh, which are quite good, but they tire very easily. None of them is perfect. And uh, the, the reason we've been working with the UK Border Agency is because they asked us, OK, so we can give you lots of data. We can give you a whole year's worth of data of what we've checked and what we found. How can we improve our process? How can we find more people with the same resources? Do we need more resources? You know, what, what should we do? So it sounded like it's a classic data mining problem. Unfortunately, there's a big, big uh, problem here, which is what they're really after is something which is unknown. We don't know how many people are hiding. And we also don't know how many people are getting through. All we know is how many people we're finding. Uh, so if you're trying to optimize this system and you're trying to say, OK, if you put more checks in, will less people get through? But you don't know because you obviously don't know how many got through in the first place. You don't know how to get through now. So you can't do your classic data mining on this one because it, it's unknown. You never know how many people are going to hide. You never know how many people are getting through. You only know how many people you're finding. So if you're finding more people, does that mean you're doing a better job? Maybe it's just more people hiding. What we do for something like this is we build a mathematical model of the port. This will lead on to a simulation. This is perhaps a surprise to some people. So data mining could mean number crunching, but it can also mean something like a simulation of a system because we actually need to understand what's going on. And if we understand what's going on, then we can optimize it. So to understand something like this, what we build is a computer simulation, which first of all means we have to make a more abstract model of it. So we have like, how is the flow through the port exactly? What are the different stages? What is the probability you go from here to here? How many lorries exactly are branching there? How many have hard sides? How many have soft sides? How many go into this check? And so on and so on. Lots and lots of things like this. And from this, 
we can build up a simulation of it. So you recognize this is the map of the port. So you've got lorries coming in as they would in real life and they go through the different checks here. They go through passport check, they go through a heartbeat check, they go to passive millimeter wave, ticketing, and they also go through the UK where they would go to different sheds. And we can look at these lorries in great detail. Yellow lorries means that there's nobody on board. Red lorries would mean there's actually somebody hiding. And we can follow the lorries here and we can check, okay, if there's somebody hiding, where is he being found, are they being found, where they're not being found. And what's underlying this sort of more pretty simulation is actually a more abstract computer science simulation, which looks something like this. You've got a logical flow through the system. You can see exactly at each moment in time which of these stations is busy, where is the lorry right now, who's working on the lorry, who's checking it. And I've got all sorts of parameters here I can change. How many lorries we're searching, how many people are hiding, I can change how many have soft and hard sides, all the sort of important parameters in the system. And from this I can then generate lots of output again, which is like given this scenario, this is the output, given that scenario, this is the output. And then I can do my data mining and all these different outputs. And from there, I can build up an understanding, OK, what's the likely number of people hiding, really? Where are they more likely to be found? And, and from there, I can then finally come up with an answer which might say, OK, what you should do. For example, maybe you want to change how the queues work or whether you're changing other search by this method or by that method. Some checks take longer than others. So if you send everybody through the check that takes a longer time, you get longer and longer queues. And that it's not acceptable because the, eventually the lorries will miss their ferry. So at what point do you tell them to change from this queue to that queue, for example? And so that unknown, yeah. the known unknown, we are solving for it like in a mathematical equation, would you say? Is it kind of like that? It's not exactly a mathematical equation. What you do is you do different scenarios. For each scenario, you get all the outputs. And then from all the outputs, you do a data mining. And you might establish there's some systematic rule that's going on. You might be able to draw something that goes, OK, right, the optimum point is here. So it's more like, more like a graphical solution. One of the questions you always have with something like this is, are you going to check everybody? Are you going to check some people more thoroughly? Or how are you going to do it with limited resources? I mean, if you check everybody for a very long time, then yeah, you're going to find more. But the queues are going to become ginormous, and nobody's going to catch their flights or their ferries anymore. So the upshot of this really is, so when you have limited resources, limited time, you need to do your searches selectively. And if you do that, we have shown in the simulation that actually you can find more people than if you search everybody for a little bit of time. It got very, very political, this one. You get so many different stakeholders and they all want different things. I mean, the port authorities, they want things to go through as quickly as possible. <laughs> of course, the police want everything to be checked as carefully as possible. The French want to find people maybe on one part. The British want to find them on another part. I mean, it's very political.